Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. Today we are going to be removing some stuff from this image of this room. So now in a previous video that was a commentary based video, I showed how you could at a high level apply some very simple techniques kind of over and over again to remove a woman from a chair uh, in a particular image. Now, since it's a commentary, I don't go into the fine details of every like tool setting or anything like that, because that's not the point of the commentary. It's more just to show the high level stuff. But um, so I wanted to chase that with a video that um, although it doesn't try to do some, you know, large activity of removing a whole person, we're going to kind of walk through just some specific uh, removal approaches, but we're going to do it in detail and in a lot, you know, a lot slower pace. Uh, so that we can look at that, that lower level of, with the same approach. So now as we approach this, you can kind of imagine this hypothetical scenario of like a friend of yours gave you this image and said, hey, can you help me out and like remove some stuff from it, right? Uh, and so we'll kind of just like pick some things in here and we'll use a few different tools or whatnot. Uh, but just kind of think of that that scenario. So like first off, for example, uh, maybe your friend says, hey, can you kind of take this poster out of the picture? Uh, primarily, I'm starting with this one because it's probably the easiest one. And and the the tool that we can use here um, is actually uh, one of the nice built in tools in Paint Shop Pro. We can we can go to this icon here and choose the object remover. I think the the object remover can work well in some cases, not as well in others. But but this is a situation where um, I think it can excel. And so the way we use this tool after having selected it is you'll see there's sort of like a, a menu that shows up here. And uh, the, it's sort of a two stage process. The first stage is merely drawing um, a selection around the object that you want to remove. And then what we'll notice is that after we've done that, you'll see that this icon suddenly becomes available. So then we click on that and then the square comes up and essentially what we're doing is we're, we're wanting to move this to a region of the image that has the data that would replace that whole selection. And so in this case, uh, you know, for me, it, it makes sense to kind of use data that's like the plain wall right next to the picture and because that will blend really well in its place. And as you can see, I, I still have the square overlapping even some of the selection, which is OK as long as I don't include the poster. So once all of that is in place, we can just click the Apply button. And then what you'll see is that it has magically just removed that poster. And I would say even with just that single click, it did a pretty darn good job. So now let's move on to uh, perhaps this lamp here. Let's see if we can uh, try to remove this guy. And this, in my opinion, feels like it's a good candidate for copy selection. And the reason I say that is just because there's a good, you know, nice, perfect region here that, you know, can be representative of what we want this to be if we were trying to remove this lamp uh, that we can copy and bring down. And then we may just have to blend it a little bit. So. If we want to do that, uh, we'll go over to our selection tools and maybe choose just the rectangular selection. And we can always, you know, grab grab extra, no big deal. Uh, because actually, I could probably grab even more. Uh, grab extra because then it'll give us room to erase and blend uh, when when we actually copy it over. So now that I've made the selection, I can do Control C for copy. And then what I like to do is I like to put it on a separate layer because I feel like it gives me a little bit more flexibility so we can right click to get rid of the selection and then do control L. And then what we'll see is that it just kind of pastes it in the middle of the image, but then we can click on the pick tool and then just drag that guy kind of where where we want it to be. So then we'll just kind of position it close uh, to you know what what the the region we want here, and then we can just use the regular eraser with um, you know at least initially probably a lower hardness, and just kind of like dialing it back a little bit, like just in all the places, right? Like maybe up here. 
just just where you can see the obvious the obvious edges and and if you're wanting it to be even more subtle you can reduce the opacity that way you know even though you create some gradients that that kind of blend with the scene a little bit better in some some ways you'll need to kind of like you know bounce between you know seeing what's underneath and seeing what's in front or you can always like also decrease opacity opacity i'm working on that uh and and uh uh you know work your way through it you may need to adjust the brush size in some cases and then here, you know, we, we start to get to more of a, a harder edge, right? Because we got to make sure the guitar is fully visible and the couch is fully visible. So this is when we'll want to kind of bring the opacity back up, right? And make sure we get like that nice fidelity still showing through. Now, as we get down to this like region here where there is a shadow, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, depending on how much fidelity you want to go for, right, you may still want more of that shadow to show through. So then it kind of becomes a question of, well, how much, how much effort do you want to put into this? Uh, but let's say we'll go for a little bit extra effort here. So, so once I've kind of achieved this level, maybe, maybe now we've hit the point where we want to just get rid of this little pole here by using the clone tool. So, so my recommendation, since uh, I like to kind of do cloning where everything's all on the same layer, I'm going to kind of commit to how much, you know, I've done up to this point and then just right click on this layer and merge down. And so now I can switch to the regular clone tool. I'm going to shrink my brush here. And since this is a pretty, you know, this this is meant to be a pretty homogenous uh, uh, sort of shadow region here. I'm perfectly fine with using sort of like a, a slightly or a, a mid hardness is fine. Uh, and, and you just want to kind of make sure that whatever you're sampling uh, really helps or matches that one area. Like you're, you kind of want to decide what what is my what is my path and what what colors do I want to use? So I'm going to I'm going to kind of just get rid of the pole first. So we'll do some clones just to get rid of the pole and that that texture, you know, really is kind of gone. And now that I've done that, I can I can dial the opacity back to kind of blend out this sort of, you know, splotchy, you know, mess I kind of made here. And so you can start to see how by using a lower opacity and a lower hardness, then it, it kind of creates more of a blending effect rather than a straight copy. And since this is meant to be an actual corner, we still want to preserve that that sort of distinct line that you see there. And I think I want to pull this corner down a little bit more so I can actually just copy it again. Bring this back in. And then now try to re-blend that with a little bit more racing. Just to make that corner kind of stand out a little bit more. All right, so we've taken care of a poster and we've taken care of a lamp. Perhaps next what we want to try to do is uh, this plant over here. So then we could, you know, we could give this a shot. You know, we could we could try to start with the object remover, you know, do do something at least for just the white wall region, you know, maybe maybe try to like select this whole region here. And then once again for the the box. 
you know, maybe we can use this region here. Just want to make sure the box uh, is just within the region that, you know, has data that we think will blend well here. And let's hit the check mark. All right, and I'd say that that's like, once again, that's not too bad. Now you can see a little bit of some lines uh, kind of around here. Uh, and the way we can kind of make those lines less obvious is by going back to our clone tool. And so this once again is where we want to do like a reduced opacity, reduced opacity, reduced hardness. Uh, uh, and just kind of like, you know, sample from different angles, right? And then just kind of hit that, hit that line. You may need to kind of reduce, you know, which, which, uh, the size of your brush, but as long as, what, as long as you're coming from, you're sourcing from different places, like you'll see that I'm actually changing my source, uh, many times as I'm going through this process. And that, that to me is what helps uh, prevent the whole issue of of getting that that clone you know pattern that we see sometimes that can make a when a clone tool usage a little more obvious. All right, so that's not too bad, but then we got to deal with uh, you know what's what's kind of going on down here, and and so this now once again seems like a good candidate for us to return back to the idea of using a copy selection. So once again, just making a copy of this portion of the image, using Control L to create a new layer, and it did show up up there. So then we can use our pick tool once again and kind of bring this down and then just try to align it, you know, roughly to fit the image. And one thing you may notice, like even just from a geometry point of view, uh, is it may not fit just right. And so you know, you've got one of two choices in this case. Uh, you can either try to rotate it to get it to match a little bit better or um, you can uh, uh, use the shear uh, uh, shape adjustment. Uh, and in this case, what I'm realizing though is for blending purposes, I think I want to grab the region a little bit larger because I don't have as much room to blend this side. So I'm going to delete this. Let's try again. Let's grab our reference area, but I want it to kind of be a lot, a lot higher here. So I'm going to hit copy remove selection and then control L, paste it as a new layer. Then once again with my pick tool, bring this down. Now I'm gonna have a lot more to erase uh, because of this, but, uh, but at least the blend will be a little bit better. All right, so even with that level of alignment, let's uh, let's start using our eraser and see see where we end up here. So uh, in this case, I do want full opacity, opacity, uh, but I'm gonna reduce the uh, hardness, and then we'll just start dialing this back a little bit here, get it to blend in with the scene as as well as we can. Down, down here at the bottom where this basket is, we're gonna have to use a little bit uh, more. We're gonna have to uh, have a have a greater hardness, but for now, let's just kind of keep working it. Get the more obvious parts, you know, out. And you know, if you if you overdo it, like let's say right here, you erase a little bit too much. You can always uh, you can always right click to to unerase if you will. One other point I'll make uh, with this kind of stuff, um, I I do find that using actual erasing works better. But um, if you prefer masking, uh, in a lot of ways that that can work just as well. It's just the process may be a little bit a little bit different. But there you go. So now we've removed that plant. All right, so now as we continue on, let's say your friend says, I want you to remove this blanket that's sitting on the floor over here. And so 
let's see if we can uh, make use of our copy selection to try to get rid of this guy. Now, given how large it is, uh, we're, we're probably going to have to do several or, you know, a handful of copy selections, and it'll take a fair amount of blending to get there. Uh, but let's let's give it a shot and see see where we end up. So maybe to hit this top part first, I'll just grab a whole region here, copy and paste it as a new layer. Then we'll kind of bring it down. And then just start using our eraser with a uh, high op opacity and a lower hardness. And then just kind of like di start dialing it back, especially these, these sort of, you know, shadowy areas, just to get it to kind of like blend in a little bit better. We may have to fix some luminance issues, but we can do that uh, later. We're just trying to create, we're just really trying to shrink the region that this blanket sort of takes up. So for now, that's not too bad. Let's grab another region, maybe over here. Once again, copy and layer paste. So we have a new layer. Bring it down. Find a good spot for it. And in this case, we might even want to drag that up. Eh, maybe not. And then we'll deal with this little floater here uh, later. But again, taking our eraser and then just starting to dial it back a little bit. And actually, in this case, it may be beneficial to even duplicate this one just because it seems to fit really well in this region and then just drag it over for this last little corner bit here. And then once again, erasing to kind of get it to blend. In this case, we got to be a little bit more careful just because, so we want to go a little bit more hardness just because the blanket really kind of is right there. And we can, we can kind of work out some of these other things after the fact with the clone tool. So, so not too bad. Let's start merging some of these things down just because I like to use the clone tool all on the same layer. So we'll switch back to our clone tool. And in this case, because there's so much texture in the carpet, we kind of want to preserve that. But because we want it also still to blend, uh, we need the hardness to be, you know, not not too, not too uh, uh, low because we don't want to start like fading and blending things together. But but here now we can start kind of grabbing patches of, of carpet and then applying it. Maybe we do need to bring the hardness down a little bit. But once again, um, you know, trying to sample from from many places so that you don't get that that sort of standard, you know, clone pattern showing up. You want to play with the hardness a little bit just to make sure you're getting you're get you're preserving the detail that you're looking for. And you know you can kind of work it work it until that carpet kind of feels like natural how you want it to feel. I think for the demonstration purpose I'm I'm kind of good with that. So at this stage we've done a fair amount of removing as you can imagine uh, using those same techniques, you could remove other objects in the scene. Uh, a lot of it's just going to depend on what you can leverage uh, existing-wise in the image to, to do something like a copy selection and maybe chase uh, with some cloning to kind of blend it a little bit better. 
So anyway, I hope that video uh, was helpful. I hope that you learned in greater detail how to use both copy selection and the clone tool to remove objects in a scene. Uh, but just like I mentioned in my other video, a lot of uh, the ability to kind of use these techniques is dependent on what other source uh, data is available in the scene. Like, so for example, if your friend asked you to remove the couch from this scene, um, uh, the, the answer to that is uh, just move the couch and retake the photo. Because um, at least for me, I would feel like there is definitely not enough uh, you know, reference information in this scene to be able to do that replacement uh, in a timely amount or with a time with a reasonable amount of effort. It would just it, to, to me, it would be just too much. Right. But but for some of the things that we did, um, although it does take a fair amount of massaging and, um, you know, just like paying attention to detail and adjusting tools constantly, um, you still can get there with a, with a reasonable amount of effort. So uh, just be conscious of what images you're going to kind of engage in before you get started in a process like this. As always, if you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new videos that I post, click the subscribe button and you can check the video description for ways to support and engage the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.